Occam's razor is that usually the simplest explanation to something is the correct one. So I don't want to make this a very long video. If I had to restart my business all over again today with nothing, here's how I would do it in about five minutes. And I hope it answers all your business questions. So say I have nothing, I need tools. I would try to borrow my parents' tools. If my parents had tools, if I had parents, if not, I'd try to borrow tools from somebody. Just try to get your hands on any tools that you can. They could be really ugly and old. I started with really old and ugly equipment. And then that equipment got me my first jobs. And then after saving up, I was able to get a, a better trimmer, then a better blower, then a better mower. And it all just started from really shitty equipment, okay? So you need to figure out a way to get your equipment. And if you don't have anyone to borrow from, then you gotta go work at McDonald's or go wash cars or go do something until you can get money or gifts. You could try to talk somebody into giving you equipment if you're a sweet talker. I didn't even know that. This is game that I wish I knew now. You could do it all for yourself or you could linguistically dance yourself into situations, but that's the first thing, equipment, okay? So now you have your equipment done. How are you gonna get collars? Because let's just get to the meat and potatoes. So what I would do if I had only equipment and no knowledge of anything, I would make, I would go to either Office Max and I would go print out some basic ass business cards that say my name, my phone number, lawn mowing, 40 bucks, and any service that you want to put. You can either go to Office Max and get them done same day, or you can go to vistaprint.com, type in long care template. They're going to have a bunch of templates where you literally just change the name and the wording and the picture and the design is already there. You could order it, get it done, have it at your house in a couple days, or you could go to Office Max and get business cards, okay? I would then I would go to Lowe's and I would go get the yard signs that are eight dollars that are empty and I would write down my name, my phone number, forty bucks, fifty bucks, whatever it is that you want to. The money does not even matter. You just need customers. Customers make money. Money doesn't make customers. Okay, so just try to get your signs out there. I would go and I would put them on intersections, exiting and entering neighborhoods. I'd put them on your own house if you could. I'd put them on your friends' houses if they have yards. I'd put the yard, I put the signs anywhere that you could where there'd be traffic for people to see you that's how i got my first callers for real people think that i door knocked i don't want you knocking on my door i don't want to go knock on someone else's door so unless you guys like people knocking on your door quit knocking on people's doors or else people are going to knock on your doors because that's how the world works you could if if you're doing a yard they'll come out to you and they'll talk to you right it's better to let them come to you versus you to go knock on doors i mean you could still do it right but i did it i didn't like it and i don't do it anymore i'd rather just leave a card if anything and if it says no soliciting don't leave a card at all so those are the first two ways to get customers. You make business cards and you make yard signs. You could also go to Vista Print or you can go somewhere else, a screen printing shop, and then you could get uh, magnets for your truck, okay? You can get magnets, you put them on your truck and you wear them all the time or your car and you wear your magnets that say your name and your lawn care business. And it's when you go to the bank, you have it on. When you go to the grocery store, you have it on. You have those magnets on all the time and that's how you get even more customers on top of your yard signs, on top of you passing out business cards. So that is uh, a third way. And then from there, the fourth way is I would get on Craigslist. I would pay five bucks and I would post weekly three, four, five, six, seven times a week. I would make the best ad. I would look at everybody's ad. I would try to make it better than theirs. And I would post ads a lot until I got enough callers. And then all while doing that, those are the four main ways I believe that I would get callers. The fifth way, and I'm going to give you game from the foresight, from the from the ending, but you you... you I'm gonna tell you it now, but you work towards it and it happens after a while, but this is the goal. Is your Google listing gives you all your customers. If you go to right now to type in somewhere to go get something to eat or to fix your truck or to go get a massage, you're on a Google listing, you're looking at all the places and you're looking at the reviews. Your job is to get on that listing and to get a bunch of reviews and to be that person that when someone types in long care, you pop up and you have the most reviews. And that's pretty much it for marketing. That's what I do now. And that's why I don't talk about marketing because I don't do anything because I'm at the top. <sighs> Okay, so that's marketing, right? And that's how you should frame it in the beginning. It's a lot of work, right? But it's only temporary because at the end, your reviews and your work and the word of mouth and you just being in these neighborhoods, people come up to you and you don't even have enough time anymore because you have so many jobs coming your way. It happens at the end. At least now you know how it works. And how you, it's hard in the beginning. It will. It's good though because it will weed out all your competition if there is any competition. It will prove who really wants to do it and who's just blowing smoke. And then if I did it, you can do it too. There's not really much more to it than that, right? It's just freaking mowing yards, it's not rocket science, even though it probably is the same thing. Okay, so now that you got marketing done, how do you get payment? Get paid however you want. When I first started, I did cash, Venmo, Apple Pay, Cash App, Zelle, all that stuff, but then I got a software, I started using QuickBooks, and then you can use Stripe, you can do whatever you want, but in reality, until you're uh, registered, you could just get payment and then you just keep track of it and then just legalize and register yourself later on. I didn't do it for the first couple of years, honestly. I just mowed. I didn't know what I was going to even get myself into. I didn't know if it was going to be a business. That wasn't really my intention. I was just mowing for fun. At least now you kind of have intention, right? 
Okay, so that's payment. And then to reschedule, because this is kind of important, people are like, customers aren't calling me back, or when I text them in two weeks, they don't know that I'm supposed to show up. Before you even leave that job, if you got the job in the first place from putting out your signs and doing the cards, you need to let the customer know, okay, like here's how much you're going to pay me. And then I'm going to text you. If you like me to, I'll text you in two weeks. If you're happy right today, I'll text you in two weeks again to get back on the yard to check in for the next one. And then we could do maintenance just like that, right? I kind of made it choppy, but that's what you would pretty much say. And then they'll either say, all right, cool, or, there's, or, or they will say no, right? So if you do a good job and you just make sure that you ask if they're happy before you ask for payment and then start talking about rescheduling, then nine out of 10 times you should get it. Sometimes I do a yard and they just really want it one time. And even if I say, like, I'll call you in two weeks, they don't, they say sure, then I do it. They don't text me back. That's fine, right? I, the world goes on, right? It's okay. Don't chase them, just replace them. So now you know how to frame rescheduling. The key is not to wait until two weeks and just blindside them and be like, hey, I'm gonna be there again. You wanna set that up before, just like when you're doing the quote, you, you could frame stuff before you even show up for the quote. You can ask for the location so you don't waste a lot of time. You could ask for a description of the yard. You could ask for pictures before you even show up and waste your time, right? You This is how you frame things to make it easier. And it goes in not just marketing and not just quoting, but it, if you frame everything, it makes it a lot easier, right? Like example, you could, build a business and then you could try so hard to get customers or you could just build a business, just get reviews little by little and try to build up a good enough building that people come to you. Like when they say build it and they will come, that's true, right? In the beginning, you gotta bring people, but eventually they'll start coming to you. Like a store that's unknown is unknown until everyone starts going and then now it's the same store. It's just people go there and it's popular and it's got a line now, right? You can have a line too. I have a line, you can have a line. Everyone deserves a line. Not of that stuff, but the good stuff. Okay, now where are we at? Registering and legalizing, when should you do it? As soon as you realize you want to be full-time and make legal money, because until you do it, you're just making dirty money and you can't really get the things in this world without a tax transcript proving that you made money, declared it, and paid taxes. So go... My advice to you would be go become cool with an accountant in your area. Usually they give you the free meeting, the free consultation for free, just so you could ask them, like, how much should I put aside? How do I do this? Go ask the CPA in your area, just like you would Google for a restaurant or for a lawn care business. Go find an accountant. Every time I've ever met with one, they were always super cool and they answered all my questions. And then now you don't got to ask me or YouTubers for tax advice, which you shouldn't because we're probably going to tell you the wrong thing. Go ask a professional to go do that. And then, like I said, it's free. Then they could file your taxes. They could give you advice and then you can get into bookkeeping and stuff. But that's for a different video. Uh, all you need to do is just get started. And this is just seven minutes, so I hope that helps.